Hi there, it's Greg here, another thing, Screencast. And today I want to teach... What the fuck is this? I somehow took a screenshot without meaning to. God damn it. Uh, anyway, tonight I want to teach you about uh, a thing that I learned just yesterday about uh, find and replace within Vim. And uh, it's super exciting to me when I learn new things uh, because it feels like no matter how long I've been using Vim, there's always something new to learn. So let me set up the, the game here. Um, basically, I had a bunch of wiki documents that had media wiki links in them. So those usually look like this. Um, in media wiki, if you've got two square brackets like that, um, it basically says, turn this into a link into the wiki article with this title, foobar. Um, and so I had all these markdown documents um, that had come from a wiki and I wanted them to become just normal markdown links. So I would want to basically rewrite that to be foobar.md, right? Uh, and so, of course, I didn't want to do this by hand. I wanted to do it in an automated way. And so what I want to do now is show you what I did and what I learned along the way. Um, so first of all, um, I'm already in this uh, directory that I was working in and I've reset the, the repo back to the state that it was originally in um, before I made the change. And I'm going to show you what I did to actually make the change or at least the interesting part of the change. Um, so the first thing I did, well, I want to search through all the documents, right, and find uh, all of these media wiki style links. So I'm using ferret to do that. Um, so this is just a regular expression that's going to be used to search through all the files in the directory. So we're looking for uh, two left brackets. They have to be escaped because left brackets normally have meaning in regular expressions. And then we're going to capture what's inside them. So I use a parent for that. Um, I start a character class with a left bracket and then hat or carrot means match everything except the following. Um, and the, the thing that I want to match is anything except a right bracket. Um, then I want to close the character class and I want to find one or more of those. So that's what plus does. Um, then I want to finish capturing and then stop looking. I um, mean, so that looks like line noise. It looks like it's like the visual equivalent of, a, of an analog modem. But anyway, it found what we want to found, right? So I, I can jump through some of these files here and you'll see these are what the links like, right? Uh, they are just series of words uh, with these double square brackets around them. Um, and so what I want to do now is um, I'll show you what the files look like. Um, you see all of the wiki titles here, they've been basically converted by GitHub into file names with hyphens instead of spaces. And obviously they've got the MD on the end there. So basically to link to JS extended portlets entry point, um, that's going to be, you'll see there nine lines below. That's the file I want to link to. Um, so my general strategy with this kind of thing is I'll try to make, uh, I'll try to record a macro and then just repeat it over and over again. Now the spoiler alert here is, unfortunately you can't use a macro to do what I want to do here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you'll see. You can use a macro to do some of the work. Um, so, so what I want to do here, first of all, let's start recording. So I'm gonna hit Q twice to start recording into the Q macro. Then I'm gonna hit down, which is my binding to jump to the next search result. And actually, I've got a better idea. This is what I'm now remembering what I actually did. I'm going to continue using ferret. So basically, uh, what Axe does is it says all of the files that are currently in the quick fix listing, I want you to do a, a search and replace, a substitute command in them. So basically, we want to do, we want to find everything that uh, is, it's, it's pretty much like the search that I originally used, but written in Vim script regex. So two left square brackets, then we're going to capture Everything that's not, everything that's not, uh, everything that's not a closing bracket. And then we're going to close the character class, repeat it, end the capture, then find two more of those things. And then the replacement is going to be square bracket followed by the thing we found, followed by those uh, normal parentheses and go. Right, so that goes through all the files and it changes them. And if you keep your eye on this line up here, or well, maybe we'll go back to where we were. We were up here. We were sitting on that line there. You'll see what it did. It made it look almost like a markdown document. Um, so we've got the, the link text that we want um, and we've got the file name, but what's missing here? We need to convert the spaces to hyphens uh, because this file doesn't exist, right? The file with hyphens exists. So this is the thing where I learned something. Um, Let's take a couple steps back. Sorry, I'm, I'm reconstructing all this in my mind. Um, like I said, when I have something repetitive to do, uh, I have two options. I either record a macro or I write a shell script or a, some other script to do the change. So my first preference, if possible, is to do, to do this with a macro. 
So let's try that. And you'll see, unfortunately, that it doesn't work. It comes close, but it doesn't quite work. So uh, let's start recording the macro. Hit Q twice to record into the Q register. I'm gonna hit down to go to the next match. Then I'm gonna hit F paren to jump across to the next paren. And then I'm gonna do VI paren, which basically means visual selection inside a paren. Now here's the thing. I wanted to replace space with hyphen in this selection. And this is a thing that I learned. If you just try it the naive way, it's not gonna work. So if I just hit colon to go into a command mode and hit S to start a substitute command and then start typing, you'll see that the visual selection disappeared. So if I now go, uh, if I now say like find all spaces and turn them into hyphens globally, see how it's going to change all of the uh, spaces on the line? That's not what I want. Here's the trick. Uh, there's a special marker that you can put in, which is percent shift V that does the search and replace within the visual selection. So even though I can't see the visual selection anymore, it is only doing it inside the brackets there, which is exactly what I want. So boom, it's done. Um, and I can stop recording the macro. And in an ideal world, uh, I would just repeat the macro and it would do it again, because uh, it will jump to the next match and replace it and jump to the next match. And you'll see that it doesn't work. So I'm gonna hit my little tricky binding here, which is, uh, actually did work. Oh, it worked. So this did not work at work. This is great, it's better than I thought. Um, for some reason it wasn't working at work um, and I had to do it manually. I basically had to hit down and then, I'll show you what I had to do. I had it down. I had to do uh, find left parentheses, visual inside parentheses, shift up to get the last thing I'd run and hit enter. So it was like multiple keystrokes. Uh, but now I can do it with the enter key, that's great. So the enter key um, is a plugin called replay that I made to make it easy to repeat the last macro. But you could also do, um, what is it, at Q, uh, at Q, at Q, and you can repeat this multiple times. So for example, you do 10 at Q, um, but I just prefer to enter, because then as I jump through, I, I have some kind of visual feedback that it's all working. Oops, there was a message there and I didn't read it, what were you saying? Okay, I must have forgotten to write, what was that? Who knows, I think that's a search that I did previously that didn't work, and then for some reason it's complaining about a buffer that wasn't saved. Oh no, there we go, that's the real one. So it couldn't find the pattern I was looking for, for some reason in that file. Okay. Hmm, not sure what that's about. Maybe it's because there were no spaces. Yeah, that was, that was a, a, a document with no spaces. Anyway, we could keep doing this, right? We go through all the way to the end. And there was another document with a link without spaces. And we're done. So um, if I go here now and we look at the diff, you'll see, look at all my beautiful links. Well, not all of them. Not all of them are right, like that one there is wrong. Why is that wrong? Hmm. Not sure about that. I'm happy that most of them worked. Did they? I could have sworn some of them worked because I was seeing them work. It was because I didn't save the files. This is what, I've got a confession to make. It's 10.25 as you can see on the clock there. I must be tired. I'm looking at all these unsaved buffers. So let's, let's do that again. Why are these things not saved? Right or? Oh. No name for buffer one. Oh, that's fine. Things you learn about Vim anyway. I can't be bothered re-recording this. I've made so many mistakes in it, but hopefully among all the mistakes, there is some useful information. Uh, so yeah, we were looking at the diff, weren't we? And now look at all the beautiful links. Um, that is splendid. Uh, so I will provide links to the plugins that I use to do this, but everything that I did, you could do without plugins. It's just the plugins remove a little bit of the fr friction. So ferret to find the files, replay to replay the macros, uh, but all the rest is like vanilla Vim. And as I said, even without the plugins, you can use like Vim grep to find stuff. Although I, I couldn't even tell you how to do it because it's been so many years since I used it. Uh, and so that is all. Um, Takeaway, percent shift V. Incredibly useful, um, and I'm incredibly happy that I learned something about Vim because when I had to do this in like 40 files, I was this close to writing a script to do it with, you know, said or something, which uh, it's always a bit sad when you have to drop out of Vim to do something that you feel like you should be able to do inside Vim. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe so that you find out when I publish more stuff. Thanks a lot. See ya.